Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? I know, I'm really sorry, uh, I promised to give a video every single week, but ever since last March, I couldn't release any video. There was a few reasons behind this, because I moved to Sri Lanka for some time, and in Sri Lanka, due to some incidents, you may heard already, uh, we had a social media ban, uh, including YouTube, so I couldn't upload videos. Now everything is okay, and I promise I'm going to give the videos again. We are going to continue the cause. And first, thank you so much, everyone who put the comment, likes, and also who reached me in the Twitter and uh, sometime even in a direct mail. And everyone was asking, we are waiting, we are waiting, we are waiting. And I understand, I am really, really sorry again. But this is not going to happen again. I'm going to continue as usual and as promised. You can stay. So, in the last video, I promised next video would be JWT token, JWT based uh, authorization server. But since we are a little behind and since you guys really waiting to use this uh, uh, when you're looking at the comments and also the mails and the Twitter, I can understand you guys are waiting to put uh, do something in real. So, uh, I'm going to push back JWT uh, authorization server a little bit and uh, before that I'm going to use auth auth based auth uh, authorization server and continue some production ready, uh, some production grade um, uh, service stack right including the configuration server and um, at service discovery API gateway uh, and uh, SUL, uh, Netflix, circuit breaker all those things. Uh, and meantime, uh, in the middle, I'm going to cover the JWT based authorization server as well. So bear with me today, I'm not going to do the JWT based authorization server rather than I'm going to do the resource server and to show you guys how you can how you can use this old token. And uh, before that, I had to tell something uh, in the last video, there was a few comments I got uh, when we verify the token, the token become null sorry username become null the problem was i was not uh, implementing the serializable interface for the user class and uh, role and the permission so if you check my uh, you, uh, github commit so i fixed that bug and i pushed the uh, the new code so now the current codes are working fine so uh, now uh, if you take uh, if you look into where we stop, so we have a profile service and we have a, a config server and also we have a authorization server. So first I'm going to uh, start the authorization servers to see uh, everything is there where as we left, right? So now authorization service being starting. So I'm going to um, obtain a token. Okay, so let's say uh, access token. Okay, I got new token, so I'm going to verify the token to make sure the bug is fixed. Right in the last time, uh, you could see uh, some of token. Okay, so now you can see the username username comes here. So now uh, that's up. So if you check um, profile server. Uh, profile service it won't work because of the config server right so um, we'll see it will break for sure yeah it broken and now I'm going to start the config server right so uh, until it gets start if you were staying this course from the beginning uh, you remember we are going a journey where we put everything in the real production grade services right so we are going to implement the all real good production practices so as a part of that, we separated configuration to config server. So that is why we need to start the config server before we start the, uh, our service. So, um, so now I think uh, config server started. So now I should be able to start the profile service. Okay, uh, so it's being starting. And now we, are, we should be able to fetch profile service. Okay, so if you go back here and if you took are going to fetch all profiles so it's working fetch profile by id it's working id by one and id two so now everything is in the back uh, as we have we left so now what you're going to do today we are going to make this profile service secure so now you can see anyone can call profile service and get their uh, get the results or create the record 
but we are going to restrict it we are going to uh, stop people being called this profile service if they don't have an authorization to do this if you are not authorized if they are not authorized to do this so uh, before that so uh, since we are going a continuous journey if we depending on config server we may need to push configuration time to time to the config server right so you guys need to understand this in the real production scenario everything is work like this you have to have a separate config server and you have to have a separate auth server and so on and so forth but for easiness of use these tutorials i'm going to disk decouple the config server from our uh, services that mean i'm going to take the config back into the server itself so why i'm doing this otherwise when we need to do these configuration changes we need to every time push into the uh, github and you guys may little confused with that process so i'm going to move the config server decouple the config server from the code base right now and you guys need to understand but in the real production you're not doing it in the real production you have to have a, in the exact way what we have today and if you don't if you uh, if you cannot understand this you may need to go back and uh, start from the video number one i think this is the video number 10 up to 1 to 10 and then you will have a good understanding about this so how we can decouple so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop uh, config server right so then obviously my uh, profile server won't work right so if I'm trying to start the profile server now, so profile server won't work. Uh, so if I go here, if I go to SRC um, main uh, resources, I can see application YAML. I don't have anything from that. So what I'm going to do is, so this is in my GitHub. So the config uh, configuration what we're using for this project. So I'm going to copy and put that configuration here right so i'm going to add that configurations here so and after that i'm going to add this uh, existing configuration spring uh, application name and is uh, profile and also uh, ddl to none right so i'm going to set uh, ddl auto to none okay so now i don't need these two right so now my service should start again without config server right so now uh, service starting but still you can see it's trying to fetch from uh, localhost 8191 because of this one so i'm going to remove this um, bootstrap.yml file and you guys feel free to use the config server if you want but uh, for majority and easier for understanding from the majority uh, people uh, i'm going to remove this okay so now still it's trying to see uh, from 8888 that's a default port for configuration so that because we have a config uh, dependency in our uh, pom file so i'm going to remove that as well right so you can have it that's fine but i'm going to remove it so now it's removed so now profile service should start as usual without any additional fetch okay so now you can see there is no profile uh, so no configuration fetching and the configuration itself in within my service okay so now however my port is 8181 because that is the uh, my profile service running now okay so so what i'm going to do is here uh, make it make this my profile service secure right so right now since my profile service is running even without a config service now we don't have a config server we can uh, close this project right so we don't need that anymore so we close that project so now since the profile server is uh, we need only profile service and the authorization service so now if we fetch a record from the profile service it's working right so it's working so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this secure first to secure it i need to add dependencies to this project right so i'm going to add these dependencies here 
So the easiest way is you can go to authorization server and copy and paste the dependencies from the authorization server. Okay, so you need to get these two dependencies, right? So cloud starter uh, or two and starter security. Okay. So now I added my dependencies to my project and now I'm going to make me want to import it. I disabled auto import so I'm going to import it manually. So these are the two dependencies you need to use, right? So uh, Spring Cloud start all two and Spring Cloud start security, right? So now uh, if I restart this service, you will notice something, right? If I restart this service, you will notice something. So service start usual way, but there is something new into the service. So you can see here, it says using generated security password. So just after we add the dependencies for security dependencies, what it does is it generate password automatically to the service, right? So now you just added this uh, user input, sorry, you just added this uh, security dependencies. Now your service itself secure, right? If you are trying to invoke the uh, your service as usual, it won't work, right? So it won't work. We haven't done anything other than adding dependencies, but adding dependencies is enough even to secure your service. So now the problem is how we can. So now you can see here you are getting a different error, right? So you see it's a timestamp status 401 unauthorized. But so now what I'm going to do, I go back to my profile service and I go back to my profile service project. Okay, here. And I'm adding one single annotation here. That annotation is enable resource server. Enable resource server. That's it. I just added one single annotation enable resource server. And I'm going to restart this. If you want, you can uh, consume this service even right now using this password because generated password, right? I'm not going to demonstrate that. You can find enough uh, YouTube videos and articles how you can do this. You can take this password and uh, send us a pass basic password here and it will work. So now, remember this uh, format of this, auth this error message, unauthorized error message. So now I'm going to execute one more time. Now you can see it's changed, the error message changed. Now it says full authentication is required to access this resource. So now it is time to go back. If you don't remember, go back and understand how O2 works. How O2 works? O2 has a resource owner, is the person, and the resource is protected by the resource server. And so now you have authorization server. Now what we have done is we mark our service as a resource server. So now it is its responsibility to protect the services, protect the resources. Now we, we are trying to access the resource, this profile resource, but it says, no, you cannot access this because these are protected. So now we need to make sure we can access it. Okay. So now it's very simple. What you need to do is you need to go back here and you need to tell the service where the service can validate the token. It's very simple. You need to tell where the service can validate the token. So this is how we are going to do it. So we need to tell security or to resource token info URI. So where my service is running. So local host 9191 slash check token or slash check token. So this is the where you need to validate the uh, token and you need to do this to do this you need to have a client ID right. So my client ID is uh, mobile. So this is the same client ID what we have given into uh, auth server. If you don't remember this you need to go back and check this mobile and pin client ID and secret. Okay. So now I'm done. So I'm going to uh, run this again. And uh, you may remember even we configure the uh, authorization server, 
we had option to configure the check token endpoint we can permit all without uh, authorizing to uh, check the token right so if you don't remember that you can go back and check that video again so okay so now we go back and we run this still it says unauthorized so now what we are going to do is we are going to get a token right so we are going to get a token and we are going to copy this token I think I missed uh, to copy one line okay so you go back here put header authorization header this is a bearer token and I think I did right okay so now let's try to access the resource again so now you get it back right so you can see here if you disable the token it fail if you enable the token it's working if you disable the token it's fail if you enable the token it's working so now if you got the next service call this one that's also fail now because it doesn't have authorization header so you can add authorization header and you can add bearer token oops sorry so you can add authorization header and add the bearer token now it's also working so now as a recap okay so what we have done here is a simple configuration we gave the security o2 resource token info uri this is the configuration to tell this service this resource server this is the authorization server you need to validate the token you will have you will get a token from the request please go ahead and validate this token from this authorization server and this is the client id and the secret you need to use to validate the token right in the authorization server side we learn uh, we can enable users to check the uh, token without even having login into the authorization server right i hope you remember that we add a configuration called permit all so now this that's it right it's very simple this is how we can use token uh, you use a token to uh, authorize to access the resource server again uh, very small recap so we in auth world auth2 world we have a uh, four entities right so we have authorization server that is we already implemented we have to have a resource server to protect the resources right so that is why we convert this profile service as a resource server right and that is the resource server is uh, ex expecting a token from the client to access the uh, resource on behalf of the resource owner so now this is a very basic one if you have a token you can go anywhere within the service in the next video i'm going to show you how you can limit particular methods depend on the user roles in other words role based permission and i promise next video won't take long time as what happened again I'm really sorry uh, what happened. Uh, I couldn't upload a video for last uh, two to three months. I'm really sorry. And that's not going to happen again. I'm going to continue this course. And thank you very much being staying with me uh, even when I'm not uploading videos. Thank you for every comment, every single like you put into the video. I read all those things, though I may not reply. I didn't have time to reply, but I'm going to personally read each and every comment. So if you have a time, if you watch this video, please take some time to comment on a video because it would be really, really nice encouragement to me. And also, if you think you have audience to uh, we have this type of videos will be interesting please do share so then a um, lot of people will get a, a benefit of having this type of thing and next video let's talk about how to validate how to control methods based on the user roles then stay safe take care see you again